Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Industry Week webcast, Smart Manufacturing Leads to Operational Efficiencies. It is sponsored by Panasonic. My name is Adrian Selko, and I'm Senior Editor with Industry Week. Before we begin, let me explain how you can participate in today's presentation. First, if at any time you are having audio difficulties or slides are not advancing, simply hit the F5 key to refresh your webcast console. If you have any technical difficulties during today's session, please press the Help button to receive assistance in solving common issues. This webinar technology allows you to resize the presentation by clicking the Maximize icon or by dragging the lower right corner to enlarge the window. We welcome your questions during today's event. To submit your questions, simply type them into the Q&A window on the left side of your screen and hit the Submit button. We'll be answering as many questions as possible during the Q&A session that will follow the main presentation, but feel free to send them in at any time. Please also be aware today's session is being recorded and will be available on the Industry Week website within the next week for you to review. You'll be notified by email when the archive is available. On your console, the Panasonic logo is hotlinked. If you want to visit their website during the webcast, you can click on the logo and a new window will open. This will not take you out of the webinar. I'd now like to introduce today's speakers. We have with us today Eric Simon, who is Director of the Enterprise Process Innovation Center, EPIC, a business unit of Panasonic Systems Solutions Company of North America. We also have with us Ramesh Naranan, who is the Director of Digital Solutions Center, part of the Panasonic System Solutions Company of North America. And with that, Eric, the floor is yours. Well, thank you for joining us today for uh, this webinar, which is really about smart manufacturing and how it leads to uh, operational efficiencies. And uh, as we said in the beginning, it's sponsored by Panasonic. Uh, I'll give you a, a little bit of background to level set everybody on who Panasonic is today. Uh, you may know us as a consumer goods company, but the fact is in uh, North America uh, for really the last 10, 15 years, we've made the transition to providing solutions uh, to other businesses. You know, we really are not about uh, consumer products so much in, in the North American market anymore. We are one of the largest manufacturers in the world, uh, and we also uh, provide manufacturing equipment and software solutions to some of the largest uh, companies in the world in a variety of industries, which includes electronics, automotive, aviation, refrigeration, food service, and, and many other industries. So you, you may not be aware of that about Panasonic, but I wanted to give you that little bit of background. We've been in business over 100 years, which I think is really a remarkable accomplishment, and it's really a testament to uh, the fact that we take a long view in terms of business. Uh, long, we, we view customer uh, partnerships as lasting for the long term. We've been able to innovate and stay relevant, and we're going to talk about smart manufacturing solutions today, which we think are a really good example of that ability to innovate, innovate and, and stay relevant. And Panasonic really has a reputation for quality, and we bring that reputation into the work that we're, we do with all of our manufacturing customers. So, uh, you know, our, our, our purpose is better life, uh, better world, and what we're going to talk about today is how we can help you with better manufacturing. So we're going to start off with a brief discussion about Industry 4.0. And for Industry 4.0, you know, if you're listening to the webcast, you probably know a fair amount about it. It's the fourth revolution in manufacturing. And again, just to, to level set here a little bit about what, what we're going to be uh, covering in today's webinar is uh, how to use data and analytics to make better decisions in the manufacturing environment. We're going to talk about technology, we're going to talk about platforms, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but at the end of the day, that's really what it boils down to, giving you the data and the, and the analytics and the visibility uh, to make better decisions about what you're doing in a manufacturing environment. Now, it, of course, smart manufacturing involves you know, moving from what often we see with customers is they're, they're, they have manual systems, paper-based systems, uh, extensive use of spreadsheets, uh, some disparate point systems, and, and really trying to bring that all together and, and put that into a, an integrated platform to enable uh, sort of a next level of, of manufacturing, which is, which is called smart manufacturing. And really we're putting machines in the business of, of making decisions. 
or machines in the business at least of providing you the data that you need uh, in real time or near real time to help you make better decisions. And we're talking about putting that data in the hands of the people who are really best equipped to make those decisions, and that's folks like sh uh, shift supervisors, the people who are, who are close to the floor, who are making critical decisions every day, and they need better information. So we're talking about you know, sensors on machines that, that gather data, collect the data, analyze the data, and then uh, either automatically make decisions or take the manufacturing process to the next step in a process enforcement kind of environment, or by giving uh, the data to the, peop to, to the people in our position to make uh, better decisions. So we're talking about uh, harnessing the power of data, connected machines, analytics, to really give you a new platform to drive uh, value in the manufacturing environment. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So what does it mean to be Industry 4.0 ready? Well, Industry 4.0 ready means that uh, you know, you've, you've got a, um, a system that is, uh, whether you've, you've started on your journey, you haven't started on your journey, wherever you are along your journey, really going to help you to, um, if you think about it, you know, to do Industry 4.0 smart manufacturing, it requires a, a digital transformation, a new way of doing things. And new ways of doing things require new technology. So uh, we've designed the, the smart manufacturing solution that we're going to talk about to be modular and scalable. So whether you're trying to solve a, a small pop problem or a big problem, whether you're trying to solve it in bite-sized chunks uh, you know, or a larger kind of a project, um, having something that's modular and scalable to, what you're, to the business problems that we're looking at uh, is really critical. Uh, you're also looking at a solution that specifically targets things like uh, track and trace, the traceability of end-to-end -end production from the beginning to the end, the, the whole manufacturing process, and the, uh, a solution that's going to give you the ability to improve the, the asset function, the overall equipment effectiveness within your manufacturing environment. So, uh, but in addition to the technology, we'll talk a bit about how we can guide you through the journey. Because again, there, there are, in addition to the technology, it's just as important to pay attention to the way the work is being done, to the business processes that are changing, and what people need to do differently to enable an industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing kind of an environment. So, you know, the next question is uh, okay, wh why do a smart, a smart manufacturing initiative? Uh, what's the value? What's the ROI? Certainly, if you're going to spend money on doing something like this, um, your leadership teams are going to want to understand what they're getting for the investment of time and the resources that they put into it. And there are really some compelling benefits that organizations have seen uh, for, by uh, implementing smart manufacturing initiatives. Uh, you're seeing things like product quality improve by as much as 30%, and obviously that's going to help you keep your customers happy. We're seeing an, uh, uh, on the asset efficiency side improvements of up to 20%, which again, uh, we, we talk to customers, you know, one of the key objectives is uh, getting more efficiency out of your assets, uh, keeping them up longer, reducing downtime, things of that nature. So some really compelling benefits when you're talking about smart manufacturing initiatives. Other things that companies have experienced will be things like uh, improved production outputs. Um, uh, you, you know, you, you want to be able to take the capital equipment, the investments that you've made, and be able to meet increases in customer demand without making additional huge investments. Well, one of the ways that you can do that is to improve your production output given the, the, the machines and the investments that you've made. Smart manufacturing, uh, smart manufacturing is one way uh, to get there. Uh, improvements in capacity utilization for more effective scheduling, from moving from planned or reactive maintenance to more of a planned maintenance environment, uh, you can certainly improve the capacity utilization. And then uh, in terms of labor productivity, that's another big one. You know, we're working with a customer right now who is trying to get more efficiency out of the labor that's associated with their, the maintenance of their assets so that they can take those resources and uh, put them to more productive use in, in other direct manufacturing tasks. And 
if you want to get more uh, labor productivity out of the current workforce and either you know, free them up to do other things or be able to experience and take on growth without any headcount, that's a pretty significant, again, compelling area to take a look at. Uh, further, what's really interesting, uh, there was a survey done of U.S. manufacturers, and about 86% of them say that uh, a smart factory initiatives, the types of things we're going to be talking about today, are going to be one of the main drivers of competitiveness over the next five years. So, you know, that's, that's just a, an extraordinary number when you look at 86%. Uh, you know, obviously, we've all been living through the pandemic over the course of the last year or so. And one of the things that, uh, you know, we've seen in different areas, it's had a lot of negative impact on, on different types of technology investments and, and uh, types of initiatives that companies are willing to undertake. But in fact, if you look at smart factory, it's the, the, I think the value and the, and the desire to get there is so compelling. 62% of leaders are continuing smart factory investments. And not only that, but they're allocating 20% more to those initiatives than what they had been doing uh, pre-COVID. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good telling indicator of uh, what companies think are, are important. Now, when we engage with customers, uh, w w you know, who either uh, don't have any of these types of solutions in place, maybe they're early on in their journey, but uh, a lot of times we'll engage with people and they, they say, look, we, we want to get to Industry 4.0 ready. We want to uh, invest in smart manufacturing solutions. But we really don't know where to start. And so what we do is actually engage with them to understand what are their main issues. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the factory environment. And, you, you know, a lot of problems you can go tackle, a lot of projects that you can go do. So part of it is really framing up uh, what does smart manufacturing uh, mean to the particular customer, uh, and then helping them to understand the value of solving a particular problem, and then trying to decide, you know, do you do it piecemeal, do you do it on a, on a broader project? So some of the questions, uh, we'll, we'll get into things like, do they have real-time visibility into all their manufacturing processes? Often um, systems are disconnected. They really have very little real-time, if any real-time visibility to manufacturing processes, let alone what the end-to-end -end process uh, looks like. Do they have a need to be able to track and trace materials and finish goods? A lot of times from a, a regulatory and compliance um, perspective, there is a, a strong need to be, uh, be able to track and trace materials, track and trace finished goods, and perhaps that's a main driving issue. They need to be able to do that in order to uh, prepare to do business with a new customer, perhaps. Um, you know, downtime is a big one. We often engage the customers. They talk to us about downtime. Um, how they need to reduce it, uh, again, how they uh, need to improve uptime so they can get more productivity and more throughput. So we, we really start to ask these kinds of questions to really understand what the issues are and where can they get started? What's the highest priority? Where's the highest value? What's a problem that you can go solve to get a little bit of momentum on the smart manufacturing front? So, you know, the flip side of that is, uh, you know, when you, after you do the discovery and you, you kind of figure out where their issues are, and where the gaps are, you start to talk about, okay, what are the things that we could do, whether it's automate repetitive processes, um, improve quality, uh, looking at uh, mitigating risk around traceability, and I'm just hitting on a few of these, um, uh, increasing visibility uh, at, the, at the machine level. Uh, there are a variety of things that, that we could be doing to solve the problem. Again, we want to focus on the activities and the projects and the initiatives that are going to drive the most value in the shortest amount of time for the customer. So, you know, that begs the question, and you start to think about all of those things, those questions, those areas that you could tackle. You know, how smart is your factory? What is it that you really want to accomplish? What is it you want to achieve? And you, you begin the journey there by, by understanding uh, what's most important to you and, and how to get started. Now, what we want to talk about next, with that as an overview, and again, a real, real brief overview of, of Industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing and some of the relevant issues or questions there, I want to get into Panasonic's smart manufacturing solution. So, um, when, you, when you look at Panasonic, again, we, we talked about we're one of the largest manufacturers in the world. We've actually been doing smart manufacturing and delivering smart manufacturing solutions to our customers. Uh, for about 10 or 15 years. We haven't done a very good job of telling the outside world about it. But the reality is we have um, solutions that can help you bridge the gap between the physical and digital world. 
Ramesh is going to talk to you next about a not uh, the concept of a digital twin, but essentially you're, you're gathering data off machines, creating a digital environment of that, and then being able to, you know, you have visibility. When we, we work with customers and they get these systems implemented, one of the things that they're just astounded at is the level of visibility they have into data at an actionable level that they never had before. It, you know, all these other benefits aside, that is the biggest deliverable out of a smart manufacturing system. And again, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. Um, we have solutions that are scalable uh, and modular that, you know, will help you solve the problem, big or small. And we can lead you through the transformation from end to end. We'll, we'll wrap up at the end after a discussion about uh, kind of a high-level overview of the solution capabilities. We'll wrap up with a discussion at the end about um, how from a, a services perspective that goes along with the technology, how we can kind of hold your hand through this whole process. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Ramesh and have him give you an overview of how we look at the manufacturing environment and some of the key components from a solution standpoint. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Um, so let me uh, give you a little bit of an overview of how our smart manufacturing solutions that uh, we developed uh, help some of the factories globally um, in, in various industries. So obviously we start with a, a digital twin. You know, in terms of digitization of the factory environment, it always starts with establishing a, a digital twin on the factory floor. As you know, digital twin is essentially a virtual representation of the factory floor, along with the physical uh, representation of the equipment, but also along with the products, products and the processes that exist on the floor. So representing your factory as a digital twin helps you you know, helps the user simulate and visualize real production without having to actually set up the real production, without having to run real production and, you know, go through the pains and, you know, issues that might come up with changes in processes and all that. You can virtualize that. You can validate that. It also helps you, uh, you know, redesign the, uh, uh, the processes uh, in a virtual format without having to take over the actual production flow. So that's the first thing. It helps you validate the connectivity of the equipment and collect and collate the data and consolidate the data. It helps you reduce the validation that needs to be done in the production floor. But once you have this represented, you next go into the connectivity aspect of it, right? So the connectivity uh, is the ability to connect to the physical devices. The complex nature in the factory floor involves all types of equipments. There are equipments from you know, multiple generations over decades. Some equipment uh, have barely any PLCs, any kind of connectivity, all the way to uh, equipment in the modern world which does all kind of MQTT and all kind of uh, you know, protocol communication, very rich connectivity. Any system that gets deployed needs to be taking into consideration all these uh, different equipment connectivity on one hand. On the other hand, there is also needs to be a bridge between the warehouse management system, the ERP system, the scheduling system, and all these others that will exist in the factory floor. Over many years, there will be some third party uh, you know, uh, systems as well as an internal in-house systems that have been written by someone who's no longer there. Uh, all those systems continue to be used and they need to participate in the infrastructure in the smart factory transformation. So the intent is to provide a single source of truth on the shop floor, one system that represents the real-time consumption of data that's not possible by uh, any one system, such as ERP, MRP, which by their nature are not real-time. But this connectivity also should help in determining the schedule of the production, the tracking of the material, the labor, ensuring that the right product is built by the worker, uh, certified to run on that uh, particular machine. So a lot of these will really need to be taken into consideration as we do the connectivity. The other aspect of it is also being able to flush the data. Uh, everything we understand is two ways, right? Everything that is being collected in real time needs to uh, be actionable in real time, but also being able to do analytics as well as updates to your ERP, MRP systems, uh, warehouse systems, all need to happen so that the single source of truth is, uh, is propagated across the entire factory floors. Essentially, that's where uh, the connectivity, and that's really the uh, one of the bigger complexities in any kind of uh, digitized, uh, digitization of the factory floor. So the question comes is, uh, how are we doing this, right? So as I mentioned, one of the biggest challenges in deploying a new system is to capture value and also provide an ROI of such systems. 
And as Eric mentioned earlier, sometimes systems take years to be deployed in a factory, and which could potentially have a huge overrun in costs, as well as in the increasing the complexity for not just for the department, but also to support the system internally. Once the vendor that deploys the system goes away, there has to be an ability to be able to self-support it, not just from an IT infrastructure point of view, but also modifications of all the day-to-day -day processes that invariably happens in any factory floor. So the uh, smart factory solutions uh, that Panasonic provides helps in facilitating that integration and implementation. Uh, underpinning this whole uh, infrastructure is what we call as an integration framework. Um, think of our integration framework as an universal translator that goes across multiple hardware devices, APIs, that really par falls part of our IoT platform. Essentially, this helps you reduce the time that it takes to integrate, but also makes them less burdensome. That's how uh, really what it does, and how is this accomplished? So the integration framework lets the user create workflow in a, on a non-code basis or really low-code basis. Uh, during runtime, like not during the development, but during deployment, to consume wide array of uh, data uh, from different channels. Uh, data can come from MQTT or socket or PLCs or files or database. All these things can be consumed through this integration framework, and that kind of integrations can be accomplished in hours during deployment as opposed to doing those in days and weeks uh, rather than months and years. So that's really where the advantage of this integration comes in. And presuming that we have finished that integration, uh, presuming that we have uh, you know, done a good job of doing that integration, the system will be able to provide a full-fledged visibility of the entirety of the operation because this helps you identify bottlenecks as well as you know, production or quality issues in real time. So once you capture the data, now you have uh, ability to make decisions. This helps you, you know, helping you manage a delivery schedule because one of the challenges we always hear from customers is that they are not able to uh, feedback to their manufacturers, to their uh, suppliers, when their product's gonna be available, but they're also not able to respond to their customers when that production will be complete. So that visibility in real time helps them uh, schedule it, but also provide that updates. And also helps you improve your OEE because by having real-time visibility, you are able to improve your operations, improve your OEE by improving your quality, availability, and performance uh, in real-time basis. Underpinning a lot of these uh, aspect of this is also the process plan. Uh, process plan is our virtual representation of uh, of the uh, digital twin. So we understand that the factory changes constantly, right? So whether you are a high mix uh, or a, a high volume production floor, changes to the processes are necessitated by building the products or either because of customers that, uh, different customers or different products that you're building or because of a continuous improvement, uh, um, which means that the factory floor is in a constant flux. So leveraging this kind of a uh, digital twill model means that uh, you as a user or the customer can do the process modifications rather than coming back to the product developers to redesign the process flow to, that reflects the changes on the factory floor. So what you're seeing here in the animation is actually our actual product, which is redesigning or re, uh, uh, being able to change those um, in real-time basis, the process plan, which says, well, you know, if this one fails three times, I want it to go back into repair. If it, this fails, uh, you know, five times, it should not continue. So those kind of changes to the processes, which is really dependent on the product or the process, can be done by the user, by the, uh, by the factory floor, rather than having to come back to the production floor. But it also helps you validate if the current material and the tools are validated or across across during the processes. It helps you validate that the process and the equipment has been maintained before production starts. And then finally, it locks the machine uh, when the conditions are not met. So those are the advantages when you deploy something like this uh, on the factory floor to design your process plan. Um, today, obviously, traceability is an important aspect. As Eric mentioned earlier, we have been doing traceability for a long time. And this is really driven from uh, two reasons. Right? One is through the regulatory needs, government regulatory needs, or product regulatory needs, customer regulatory needs, but also for the quality purposes, improvement in quality. So most systems do require this traceability. And 
And traceability is a very generic name, but data that's being collected can be quite varied. Just like equipment forms have different generations, the data that can be collected out of this equipment is wide array. You could have equipment that is, you know, that barely has much information beyond capturing the time that the product went through or the process flow, um, but or you can collect an entire genealogy of the product that's being captured. So any processes can be done end to end. Again, machines change constantly, and the uh, data that you're capturing from that, not just from a product traceability, but also process traceability, uh, widely varies. And the system should uh, provide ability to capture the data, uh, which are configurable really at runtime, and provide a way to report on that on need basis. The system should also be able to compress the data and store the data, because as you know, uh, traceability is not a six month, one year requirement. It could be 12 years, 14 years, 15 years, depending on the uh, industry, such as automotive or medical. And so the system should be able to compress and store the data, but also be able to provide that in a granular way when you do retrieve that uh, traceability in a quick and efficient format. So that's really where uh, our system really thrives and uh, provides this in a, a very detailed format. Um, in addition to that, one of the uh, major areas of focus from the smart manufacturing solutions from Panasonic is the asset performance maintenance solution. Uh, what we have here is a complete solution that tracks and uh, provides ability to do both repair requests as well as maintenance work orders for all the equipment that you have in the uh, factory floor. Why do you need this? You know, typically a poorly maintained equipment not only costs delays in uh, productivity, but also have significant dollars uh, cost in utilization, uh, as well as wastage in material, wastage in uh, you know, or poor quality, rework issues, all kind of things happen. And having a system that helps you not only uh, you know, provide visibility, uh, but also provide a complete asset inventory, uh, have ability to schedule maintenance, view when a maintenance was done, what kind of repairs were created, but also provide ability to manage spare parts, uh, monitor certifications, monitor certifications on who gets to work on what equipment, that person, whether he or she is certified to work on that, uh, provide a knowledge base, and then provide complete visibility to the total cost of ownership. That's really what a system such as this uh, offers. And it also helps you reduce unplanned maintenance by you know, being able to do predictive as well as prescriptive maintenance. So uh, before you need to do this, you either don't miss out on doing maintenance, or sometimes doing over maintenance, something that we have seen many of our customers uh, go through. So basically that can give you, uh, uh, that can cover assets uh, across the wide array of the factory floor, everything from your production uh, equipment to you know, calibration equipment and all that, but also to uh, things that are outside the typical scope, such as HVAC units, IT infrastructure. You know, they are not necessarily used in your production, but uh, any system that can give you a visibility end to end will really help uh, the users manage this uh, in a in a complete uh, consolidated way that impacts production. Um, now that we have all the data collected, you want to be able to summarize the data. You want to be able to uh, get the data in a consolidated way and then being able to do uh, reporting, which most systems do have. But reporting alone is not just sufficient. You want to be able to get business intelligence out of that system. Uh, Panasonic Smart Factory Solutions, um, what we also provide is uh, BI solutions that is really based on the data warehouse that we create. And this BI solution not just answers the questions that you have, but also helps you ask the right questions. Uh, and we do this with a data discovery model. It's called as associative data discovery wherein we are able to provide uh, insight and drill down. So as you see the data, you start asking or interrogating the system with more and more data, so you can do drill down in 360 degrees rather than a pre-programmed uh, drill down, which is typically what happens. Uh, so you need to know all the questions beforehand, whereas with this kind of a solution, and any BI solution for that matter, what they should be able to provide you is a uh, answers to questions that ha you haven't really thought of. And that's uh, that's the real focus of this. So, so now that I have covered a overall uh, some of the solutions that uh, our, uh, our, fact, our smart manufacturing solutions offers, I'd like to touch upon a couple of uh, use cases um, that we have encountered uh, at some of our customer sites 
gives you a little bit of insight. By no means is it a complete representation of all the capabilities or also the all the customer base, but a lot of customers go through this journey and are going through this journey at different levels, and uh, they are not trying to implement the smart manufacturing or a smart factory or industry 4.0 as a holistic uh, challenge, but rather try to address certain problems. And so they start with the digitization of certain aspects of it based on some specific challenges and then expand that through the entirety of the, uh, of the factory. Uh, one such example here is the, this customer. They are one of the largest uh, uh, multinational electronics uh, uh, manufacturing uh, that is based, uh, it's a Taiwanese uh, Chinese customer, uh, but they have uh, global, uh, uh, global locations. And here is a customer, they had to have, uh, due to uh, their global uh, need, they need to be able to identify and calibrate all the assets that are you know, all over the world. And they have thousands and thousands of assets. So it's taking them, it was taking them considerable amount of time to capture all the assets, manually track them, perform the calibration, and put it back in production. Now, if they missed any of them, it would take them really uh, a long time to go back and capture it. So it's been a pretty challenging aspect for it. When they came, to, uh, came with this problem to us, we suggested to use our asset performance maintenance where it does a few things, right? They were able to address the need for a solution like this by not having a manual visibility of all the assets, but let the system do the tracking. Let the system do the tracking of the location, tracking of consumption, tracking of uh, repairs, and being able to ut uh, utilize it all in a, in, a, um, in a real format, right? So that's what they have been able to do that. And then by proactively scheduling this maintenance, they have been able to do, uh, take the recommendations from the system and by, uh, you know, to a large extent by enforcing it, the system then packs those tags, those, um, those um, um, assets, so that they don't go into production without any calibration and uh, maintenance that needs to be done on that. So by doing that, they were able to actually uh, improve their processes, improve their uh, OEE, but also help them reduce the uh, two weeks of labor time every, in every month, so which was significant for them. So that was a really good success story for us, and it was deployed on a global scale. Uh, another one is uh, this electronics manufacturer. They are US-based, and they are in the um, utilities industry. And this uh, customer, um, their challenge was that they were, were they had an old, um, you know, in-house built um, uh, MES solution, but their processes were changing. They were building different kinds of products, and it was very difficult for them to make those modifications to that antiquated system and accommodate all the process changes that were happening constantly. So the other aspect or other need for this customer was to, um, to not only that, they had to integrate with their customers, that customer's customer system, so that any time the production was uh, going through, they had to validate that with the customer's end system, right? So um, those kind of modifications were changing constantly. So the validation with the third party had to be done in real time and had to be very tightly integrated. And that included all the way from equipment to the factory floor. So that's what we provided them. And after we, they implemented the process enforcement product, they were able to accomplish full traceability at, as well as able to do end-to-end um, -end visibility. So that made a big difference for them. And, uh, they were, and we are also able to give them fa factory end-to-end -end, uh, traceability all the way through RMA process, right? So not just to shipping, but even to RMA. So they were able to track the cycle time, the defects, and uh, you know, rework that had to happen. So that was a big uh, factor in their um, smart factory journey. So those are some of the couple of the utilities example. Uh, now let me hand it back to Eric, who can talk about the uh, professional and managed services. Okay, thank you, Ramesh. Eric? Yes, thank you, Ramesh. That was a great overview of the uh, of the solution, and want to talk a little bit about uh, for a few minutes here in, in the wrap up about other things that are important in addition to technology in order to um, complete a smart manufacturing journey, if it's ever complete, but. Um, to, to take on the smart ma manufacturing journey and to achieve success. So when, we, when we've talked about it, we've talked about the technology. At the end of the day, uh, as we said, it's about using analytics and data to make better decisions in the manufacturing environment. Um, when you're doing one of these projects, it's very critical that you have a professional services team. It's, it's more than just the technology implementation. Professional services team that can guide you along the way. So 
um, really what's the, uh, what the, what's comprised of, if you look at the success factors around any project, it's really boiled down to three things. Um, you know, do you have the right technology and the, and the solution that you need in order to solve the problem or address the opportunity? Uh, second, do you, you need manufacturing expertise, people that understand the manufacturing environment, that understand the business processes, the nature of the work that goes on within a, within a manufacturing environment. Um, they can help you to identify gaps and opportunities and, and then understand the value of those. And then the third thing that you really need is a um, services team with a proven implementation methodology that, you know, you, you don't want to get into a project that never ends. You want to have a clearly defined scope and, you know, uh, manage to a schedule all the way along and, and have a solid methodology for doing things like testing and user enablement. And really that professional and managed services team is, is kind of the, the you know, it's as important as the technology, I'd argue, uh, for smart manufacturing. Uh, when we go into one of these uh, initiatives, the very first thing that we do, we talk about the discovery process, you know, and wh where the value is, and then stay laser focused on delivering that value. Uh, projects have a tendency to, um, you know, where scope gets out of control, we start to focus on, wouldn't it be nice to have this, and wouldn't it be nice to integrate to that system? You gotta stay laser focused on where the value is and only, you know, um, you know, focus on those things that are going to deliver that value and not to get too, too distracted with, uh, with other things. Um, in order to get to the value, you've got to have user adoption. You know, users need to adopt and use the system uh, as it's intended. So uh, really providing that, that help and that guidance from uh, the, the discovery through the technical part of the implementation ultimately figuring out the use cases that the users uh, will, will be doing on a day-to-day -day basis and enabling them uh, to understand the system, how it's going to enable the work that they'll be doing in the future, and that whole user enablement um, and onboarding process is, is vitally important, and we provide some help with that. We've talked about the integration a little bit. You need to integrate with other systems. You need to be able to gather data easily from connecting to machines, so that's definitely a, uh, an important component. And of course, an implementation um, methodology that makes sense for this type of a project. So, at the bottom, uh, you know, of the slide, we talk about value execution. When all is said and done, that's ultimately what you're looking for. Is you know, we define what the value is going to be up front, commit to delivering that value through the course of the project, and stay laser focused on uh, once the system is up and running, making sure that you have the data that you need to make better decisions and to get the value that we've all committed to in the beginning on going forward with the project. So with that, um, you know, uh, you know the, uh, we have a, uh, the ability to learn more. You can schedule time with us to talk about your smart manufacturing needs. Uh, you see the, uh, the email address there. If you'd like to get more information, we'd encourage you to reach out. And I think with that, we're going to turn it back over to our friends at Industry Week who are going to facilitate the fielding of some questions for us um, uh, based on what we covered today. So I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation. A few of you have already submitted questions, so we're going to jump right in. While our presenter is an answering your questions, please take a moment to complete the feedback form on the left side of the lower toolbar. Eric, we'll start with you with the first question. Can you provide an estimated ROI for undertaking the smart manufacturing transformation? Yes. So in terms of ROI, we talked earlier in the presentation about the types of benefits that companies usually experience from uh, undertaking a smart manufacturing initiative, uh, everything from improved uh, asset efficiency to labor productivity, improved throughput, uh, in increased overall equipment effectiveness. But, you know, in, in the work that we've been doing with our customers in terms of ROI, what they're really looking for is a payback within 12 months. And we tend to structure the projects and the scope of work so that we can help them to, you know, get the systems up and running, get everybody uh, needing to, you know, doing what they need to do, and get to the point where we start to see value delivery pretty quickly so that they can see a payback uh, within the first 12 months on that smart manufacturing initiative. To, companies just don't have the appetite for, uh, you know, one, two, three-year projects before they get an ROI. So that's what we tend to focus on. 
Okay, thank you. Ramesh, the next question for you. What areas are your customers focused on, on prioritizing, excuse me, in their operations to become a smart factory? That's a good question. Um, typically what we have seen is the customers typically start with specific use cases. It could be a requirement from their customer or you know, ability to improve quality, reduce errors or certain automations, et cetera. Um, typically that's what is driving their customer uh, smart factory journey. What they struggle with is on the challenges on how to capture all the data from the equipment on one hand and also how they can integrate across uh, different islands of data. So the customers typically are looking into improving their maintenance aspect of it. They could be improving their inventory control. They could be reducing their manual entry that uh, typically happens in a lot of factories where the equipment is still fairly old. So they're still doing a lot of manual entry. They can be looking into real-time visibility. How can I get uh, actionable data in real time rather than wait for daily reports? Or they're looking at improving their system connectivity uh, or eliminating any kind of data disparity. So those are some of the challenges that we encounter typically or the customers encounter that they're looking for some smart factory solutions. Thank you. Eric, do you recommend transforming by product line or by manufacturing area that works on multiple products? Yeah, that's a good question as well. You know, it really depends on, um, you know, what, what, what part of the smart manufacturing process or solution you may be implementing. If you're implementing a more of an MES or process enforcement uh, type of process, really we'll look at modeling a manufacturing line end to end. So from the beginning to the end of the process and how it's going to flow the whole way through. If you're looking at something more like asset performance maintenance, Typically, we'll group together, you know, an entire area of the manufacturing facility uh, and go through kind of one uh, area at a time, one step of the manufacturing process to another to another, but, uh, you know, get each one of those kind of up and running uh, on its own before going to the next one. So we, we've seen both, um, you know, you can do a variety of things, but those are probably the two most common uh, types of uh, processes that they're putting in when, when you're looking at product lines versus manufacturing areas. Thank you. The next question also for Eric. Industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing is a new idea for us. Can you tell me about your professional service teams and how they can help us with it, this transformation, not only in the plant and systems, but also educating our people so they are prepared to manage this new environment? Yes, uh, sure. That, uh, you know, the, the, the services aspect and the things that you tackle in this question are just as important, if not more important, than the technology and our implementation and professional services uh, people, along with our ecosystem of partners, can really uh, hold your hand, if you will, the whole way through the smart manufacturing journey. It starts with understanding up front what you're really trying to achieve. Like, there are a lot of things you could be doing in, in the smart manufacturing setting. Uh, what are your specific goals? What, you, what, what specific objectives are you trying to achieve? And then, and then uh, forming the project uh, around that, understanding what the value is. So there's a whole kind of upfront discovery process to lay out uh, the goals, objectives, and, and how we're going to get there. Uh, it will help you through solution design, help you through the whole process of implementing any kind of solution, which will involve uh, typically new business processes, the, the technical implementation and integration of the solution into your environment, uh, extensive testing, you know, use case development, user enablement, all of the, uh, the activities that tend to go along with user adoption of the system. And then on the back end, really helping you to make sure that you're getting all the data out of the system in the way that you need to see it. And then transitioning to uh, sustainment and helping you to become self-sufficient uh, so that, you know, that team can, can go off and, and we go into maintenance mode at the end of the project. So really they hold your hand all the way through the journey from beginning to end. Okay, thank you, Amish. The next question is for you. Are there third-party systems that you don't integrate with smart manufacturing? Oh, that's a very interesting question, and we have seen this quite often. I mean, we have to recognize that um, this is more of an evolution than revolution in terms of uh, solutions that exist on the factory floor. There are a lot of numerous systems or islands of data that we always have to navigate through when we go and deploy at customer sites. The customers have, uh, you know, um, obviously an ERP, MRP type solutions that are running, um, you know, warehouse management solutions, uh, uh, scheduling systems, and uh, so on and so forth. There is also 
custom in-house in in-house built solutions uh, that exist and we recognize that customers have uh, machines equipment for multiple generations and so uh, systems that uh, get deployed need to have ability to integrate across this wide area or myriad of systems and uh, one of the advantage or one of the things that we have in our solution portfolio is something called as an integration framework that provides a way to integrate across uh, disparate systems to collate as well as uh, provide some kind of seamless data exchange across these systems and we provide as well as consume APIs for this interconnectivity across those systems and essentially what it helps to do is to build this and deploy this in a uh, in matter of you know hours and days rather than you know weeks and months and that's really important because once again uh, systems that are monolithic and uh, gets deployed holistically do really take a really large lot amount of time to see the value proposition at the end of it all. Thank you. And Eric, this question's for you. A lot of companies offer smart factory solution. What makes Panasonic unique? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the space, uh, it is becoming more crowded almost by the day. And at the feature function level, you know, there are the differences between solutions. There are some, some things that are will be good or bad or missing or, or there. But if you take it up a level and think about uh, Panasonic, we've really been in the smart manufacturing business uh, for at least the last 15 years. And as we said in the beginning, we're one of the largest manufacturers in the world. We really understand this space. Um, the solution itself is uh, very modular, very scalable, uh, it comes with uh, a BI capability that we think is, is, is you know, going to give you the information that you need to make decisions and, and allow you to slice the data any way that you want to see it. Um, you know, we've had first, so I think we were one of the first to introduce traceability. Um, and, and again, we, we've really been in this business um, on the leading edge of smart manufacturing for a, numbers of year, a number of years now. We just haven't done a very good job of, of telling the broader market about it. I'd say the other thing is the, the way that we integrate with machines. You know, we, inter we, we, are a, we produce machines and we sell machines and we know how to integrate with machines. And so whether it's Panasonic equipment or uh, equipment from other manufacturers, uh, we've got, again, many years of experience in how to best integrate with machines and get the data that you need to drive your smart factory solution. So um, I say at the end of the day, those are the things that make us unique. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we've run out of time. I'd like to thank our speakers, Eric Simon and Ramesh Narayan, and our sponsor, Panasonic. On behalf of Industry Week, have a productive remainder of the day.